In, in, in those days, uh, the, the idea of flying back from Stanford, California to Washington, D.C. for an interview to see if you wanted to be, a, if you would be accepted as a Supreme Court law was virtually un, un, unheard of for people of, of ordinary student means. Uh, and, you know, you, to take the train for several days, you wouldn't do either. So people really on the East Coast, at the East Coast schools, had a much better chance of getting, if, if the justice wanted an interview, a much better chance of getting the job just because they could, it was manageable to come from Boston or uh, uh, New Haven or New York and even Chicago. Uh, and so when one of uh, Justice Jackson's previous law clerks, uh, Phil Neal, who was then teaching at Stanford, asked me if I'd ever uh, thought of clerking at the court. I, I said, no, I hadn't. And he said, well, you know, I clerk for Justice Jackson. Justice Jackson is coming here to dedicate the new law school. Would you like to interview with him if he comes? And I said, sure. You gotten to know Rehnquist pretty well as your student? Oh, sure. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. I had a, had a, he was president of the Law Review, and I always had a good deal of interchange with the president of the Law Review. Right. Jackson to come out and, uh, and give a speech which he was very gracious about doing, and it was on that occasion that I introduced him to Bill Rehnquist mm -hmm. and recommended Rehnquist as a clerk. Mm -hmm. Now, Rehnquist was number one in the class? Rehnquist was number one in the class, was president of the Law Review. Mm -hmm. Very, very able guy. So, the rest is history, as I think. And so, uh, Justice Jackson, when he was out at Stanford, interviewed me. And I mentioned in the book that uh, as soon as he discovered that I was of Swedish extraction, he uh, regaled me with tales of some of his Swedish clients in Jamestown, New York. And I thought, surely, you know, that he'd just given up on me. They was just making me feel good. And then several months later, I got a letter from him saying, well, would you like to come and be my clerk? So I did. Frankfurter's quip when he wanted to disagree with Jackson would be to label a Jackson position Jamestown Justice. I've often wondered if Jackson would ever try to sort of take the bait and actually deliver Jamestown experience, anecdotes, information. <coughs> well, but I think he was doing the Jamestown stuff all the time when he was writing opinion. Right, right. But without being explicit about it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, but I, I just mean he was doing the same thing that, that he did so skillfully as a lawyer. That's what he was doing in his, uh, in right. his opinion. Right. Okay. Did you ever have any conversation that reflecting on this area at all? Did you hear him have him talk about Jamestown or Chautauqua County? Or? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we did because I, because I conceived an image of what it was was all like and it sounded very attractive to me but more specifically I I can't I can't tell you I mean I he left me I think he left me with the view that there couldn't be any career much better than being a lawyer in a place like this where you could have the kind of practice that he did I've always thought that mm -hmm. Oh, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Says the only man in the room who's got one. <laughs>